Merry Christmas, y'all. He got his teacher pregnant. This is what happened next. We open with a trio of boys walking through the halls before our protagonist and soon-to-be school hero, Donnie Berger, announces he got tickets to the Van Halen concert. Zam, you should invite one of the girls. Nah, I'm not into girls anymore. I'm into guys too. Hmm, well actually what he really meant is that he's into women now. Okay. Suddenly, his friend decides he really wants to show us his lunchbox. Very cool. Then, Donnie decides to make his move on his teacher. Hey, you want to come to this concert with me? He proposes that they could be good pals and she could play rock, paper, scissors with him. That is a month's detention. At detention, Donnie faces the unimaginable punishment of being alone in a room with his hot teacher. Then, like something out of a fantasy, she begins to flirt with him. You like me, don't you? I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to say right now. I've been watching you a long time. Like when you scored that game-winning touchdown, you were... Sweating like a jar of pickles in the hot sun. Huh. Okay. Is this really happening? Yep. And whatever this is, Donnie's buddy gets a front row seat to it. Nice. We proceed with a wholesome montage of a teacher and student bonding together over the many lessons life can give us. One day, at a school assembly, a sussy eruption can be heard. Hmm. Carry on. So anyway, school is like really lame. Oh, seems like someone is having an impromptu piano session in the back. The principal signals for the curtains to be dropped and, well, it's Donnie and his piano skills are amazing. Let's go, we did it. Even the teachers can't help but celebrate Donnie's performance. Fast forward a bit and we're in a courtroom. The case has garnered mass attention and at the trial, we see that Miss McGarrickle has plumped up for the winter. The judge, who I'm pretty sure is Ursula Cross with a bulldog, notes that Miss McGarrickle shows no remorse for her actions, going as far as to state that, He makes me feel like there's a rainbow coming out of my beaver. Okay. Due to the severity of her crimes, she's sentenced to 30 years in prison. The custody over her future baby will go to Donnie's dad, until Donnie is 18, then he'll get it. In the aftermath, Donnie's star soars high and bright. He's on magazines, TV shows, and even becomes a movie star. Ironic. Fast forward many, many years later and he's broke and old, but still has the IQ of a child. He just learned from his lawyer that he owes $43,000 in taxes. I don't got that kind of money. Don't screw up my Tom Brady poster, man. Look at that jawline. Did I write this movie? Anyway, his lawyer has an idea. You know, there's this marathon going on with this fat guy, fat guy, who has 8,000 to one odds. I really think he can win it. All right, put me in for 20. Then, seeing as Donnie has no other financial prospects, the lawyer inquires about his son, Han Solo. You named your son Han Solo Burger? Yes, sir. Han Solo Burger. Coolest name in the world, right? Oh, he's a chonker. Sadly, his son wants nothing to do with him. Well, can't you just Facebook him? I can't afford that shit. Actually, that's not how that... Anyway, meet Donnie's son, Han Solo, who now goes by the name Todd Peterson. He's getting married, but is weary of his face being plastered on a magazine about the wedding. I just don't want anyone to find me. Calm down, babe. Did you bring your security undies with you? Yes, uh, of course. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what that's about. We cut to Todd and his fiancée, Jamie, pulling up to his boss's summer house where the wedding will be held. The boss man, Steve, shares that he himself was married a whole three times to a bunch of cheaters. Huh. Inside, we meet Jamie's brother, Chad. Uh-oh, that's quite the strong hug. Todd salutes the soldier, but invites his wrath after Chad realizes he's not a soldier. He's not even a... Girl Scout. You put that hand down, you civilian. Oh, and by the way, if you ever hurt my sister, I will hurt you. Meanwhile, Donnie kicks back at a clump before being handed, you guessed it, the magazine with his son on it. Afterwards, in an effort to get some cash, Donnie heads to his old agency to try to book a gig. Though, the receptionist claims the boss man, Mr. Morgan, is on vacation. While there, he runs into his old buddy, Vanilla Ice, but he gives him the cold shoulder. Heh <laughs> Why are you being like that, man? We were friends for 20 years. Yeah, until you did my mom. <laughs> Whoa now boys, no one trashes my studio unless I got some cameras rolling, okay? Huh, so you weren't on vacation. Donnie gets to chatting about some potential opportunities, completely disregarding the fact that he's yesterday's news. But then, Mr. Morgan inquires about Donnie's son. He must be a total nutcase, right? No, he's doing good, lost a lot of weight, and he's a hedge fund manager. Hmm, everybody loves a happy ending. This could be great for ratings. Mr. Morgan agrees to fork up 50 large in cash if Donnie can get himself and his son at the woman's prison for a good old family reunion. Back at the house, everyone gets to chatting, except for Steve's mom. She's sleeping. I hope I mean that this time. Suddenly, my goodness, somehow Donnie's tracked down his son. Ever the delightful guest, he leaves Jamie with a present. Interesting. Yeah! Then he storms in. Oh, Todd, your old man is here? Well, yeah! Oh, thank God, Granny is fine. Todd, what are you doing? Sorry, those are yours. Anyway, Todd can hardly keep himself together at this sudden turn of events. 
I thought you said your parents are dead. Uh, yeah, th this is my old man friend. They proceed with introductions, and then we get to chat. Hey -o! Oh god, no. After a pause, that feels like forever. <laughs> what? Donnie goes on to share that him and Todd are in fact best friends with the most unbelievable story on how they met. You see, Todd was by these train tracks and he had a burrito and dropped it and he hopped down and I was like, oh my god, this guy's gonna die. So I lay down on the tracks, tense up my muscles, and the whole train just whooshed right over me, saving Todd. Why wouldn't you just get another burrito, Todd? Hmm, that is a fair point. The family absolutely adores Donnie and begs him to stay, to which Todd reluctantly has no choice but to accept. Later, the pair chat while Donnie unpacks his garbage bag. Your mom is sick, you gotta come visit her. The two argue about Donnie's lackluster parenting skills and how Todd got diabetes because of it. You let me eat donuts for breakfast every day, man. But that's what you can ask for. But it's not what I needed. Their arguing is cut short by the party that's starting soon. At the party, Todd chats with his boss before Donnie erupts some stupid line Adam Sandler wrote that I don't quite remember at this very moment. Who the heck is that guy? Jamie signals Donnie to come over and... Well, yeah! Hmm. Is that back? Because I've been dying for that to come back. What's up? What's up? Alright, that was pretty funny. Feeling inspired, Todd gives it a shot. What's up? Yeah, that wasn't great, Todd. Afterwards, we cut to Todd's best man, Phil, who decides to step down seeing as Todd's true best man, Donnie, popped up out of nowhere. Turns out, Phil and him weren't even that close. That's true, he had no idea who he was. Yeah, that's kind of sad. Donnie pulls up to the mic, but very quickly spots a fabulous baseball course on the property. Hey, why don't we blow this popsicle stand and play some ball? Batter up. And the first ball goes to... <laughs> Grandma. Very nice. On the other hand, as a physically incapable beta male, Todd is very nervous about receiving the ball. Come on, man. Even the two-year-old can do it. Okay, let's get this out of the way. <laughs> He's fine, guys. He's normal. Moving on, at night, Donnie overhears Todd in the shower while he argues with Jamie. He walks in as Todd steps out. You shower in your bathing suit? Indeed he does, and he blames his insecurities on his father. I can't even take my shirt off around people. Why? Well, because his dad gave him a ginormous back tattoo when he was 13. He's grown quite a bit since then, hence the warped heads. However, Donnie assures him it's perfectly normal. The same thing happened to him with his tattoo. Oh, that's reassuring. Then, in an effort to get his son to cheer up, Donnie starts to tickle him. Soon, things escalate into a full-on wrestling match, which Chad steps in on. Oh, you boys are wrestling. I happen to be a state champion. Let's go. Chad psychs himself up and goes straight for the kill. Things are looking dicey for Todd until his pops comes in clutch. We cut to Todd getting ready for bed when his bride-to-be pulls up donning her dress. Wait, no, that's bad luck for our marriage. You're right. I've seen the end of this movie already. Their conversation sways towards Donnie and Jamie remarks that it's no surprise his son ran off. Wait, what exactly has Donnie been going around saying? He's been handing out his book. Just read the first page. Head in the class? Nice. Todd flips the first page to reveal a plea to him. To reach out, he can't help but get emotional. Can I get a hug right now? Or? No, 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 no. Damn, his wife doesn't even let him hug her. To be fair, she is wearing that very expensive dress. Well, how about you take it off? No! Yeah, take Down. Todd, she's treating you like a damn dog, man. The next morning, Donnie basically mirrors that statement, criticizing his son for being a little baby wimpy boy. Right after, the family heads to church to do church wedding stuff. Very cool. They're supposed to start with the groom's father, but Todd shares that his father died in an explosion. I'm sorry to hear that. That's okay, he deserved it. This hits a nerve with Father McNally, who himself had an especially abusive father. You don't see me complaining, boy. Feeling inspired by his dad's earlier words, Todd decides to stand up for himself for a change. All I can focus on is your sh breath. Seems Father McNally took that well, as instead of getting angry, he invites Todd to the garden. Just uh oh, he's pretty ripped for an old guy. The two commence with battle, with the holy man taking the lead, but then Todd hits him with a hell of a shot. Though, this only empowers Father McNally, who now seems to be possessed by a demon. Ironic. Todd assumes his battle stance, and then ah! Oh, nice. Naturally, everyone is upset at Todd, but Donnie diffuses the tension by reminding everyone about the traumatic experience Todd went through the last time he was at a church, during his dad's funeral. Who might I remind you supposedly exploded? And it was an open casket funeral. Yep, Todd ended up watching a squirrel run off with the little that remained of his totally deceased father. Tiny piece of skin flapping in its mouth. Tragic. Okay, seems like everyone likes Todd again, but there's still the issue of who's gonna marry them now that Father McNally is angry. Maybe we could have a black pastor. It's very urban, very street. Okay. They got their new man and a new location. Now it's time for the bachelor party. A party that Phil has expertly planned as a night they'll never forget. They arrive at the location. Spa for men. Woo woo! Oh heck yeah. However, as the lady drones on and on, 
It dawns on Donnie that this is just your everyday run-of-the-mill spa. Nonetheless, Donnie totally very happily goes along with the relaxing night until he makes a scene. Come on guys, this is heckin' lame. This is not how you party. Suddenly, the lady from earlier storms in and spews a tornado of insults at Donnie before admitting she finds him irresistible. So I'm gonna go put a dent in that. Take notes, boys. After he wraps up, all the gentlemen head to a club. They enjoy the night. Todd meets a girl that knows he's... Han Solo. And they dance their troubles away. Sorta. Once everyone's all tuckered out, Donnie sends them home, except for his son, whom he chooses to spend some quality time with. He bestows upon Todd an earring his mother gave Donnie, wishing to hand it down as a sort of family tradition. All right, let's get that bad boy pierced. Come here. Come here. Looks great. Continuing their night of mayhem, the pair decide to hit up old Uncle Vinny. Whoa, it's Vanilla Ice. Was Uncle Vinny Vanilla Ice this whole time? Donnie apologizes about Vanilla's mom, and they make peace before heading out on the town. They get up to no good in an ice rink, piss off a convenience store clerk, and strike out at a bowling alley. Oh hey, the clerk followed along. As the night slows down, Donnie decides to finally teach his boy how to ride a bike. Todd clutches his security undies as he feels scared. Why do you have those? Cause you never picked me up at school once and I got scared and I shit my pants. Oh, well you don't need those anymore son. I'll never leave you. And so, Todd tosses them away and rides off on his own with no training wheels. Uh oh. At last, the night concludes which Vanilla objects to before taking a long nap. Before entering the house, Donnie exclaims his love for Todd, aka Hanzi. I want you to call me dad every once in a while. Uh, I'm not quite ready to do that yet, Donnie. Then, the pair share a heartfelt hug before Todd decides that yes, he will visit his mom in prison. Realizing the camera crews will be there, Donnie tries to convince him otherwise as he now values his son more than staying out of jail. Respect. The next morning, Todd is awakened by a horrifying scream. His wife has stumbled upon her wedding dress covered in puke. Yeah, that was Todd. Suddenly, Donnie barges in, believing the screams to be the result of an intruder. No, we're fine, sort of. Who wants a piece of Vanilla, chill man, we're good. Cutting to a bit later, Donnie made everyone breakfast while Todd took care of the dress. He rings up his pops and lets him know he's on his way to visit mom. Oh crap. Donnie rushes to his car and speeds over to stop him. Try as he might, it's too late. Miss McGarrigal walks over, striding her stuff along the way. Ah, the memories. Fun fact, she's the mom of the younger version in real life. Anyway, they briefly catch up before. Wait a minute, is that a microphone? Donnie initially feigns ignorance, but Mr. Morgan spills the truth. I offered your dad 50 grand to set this up. An enraged Todd storms off before getting physical with Donnie. And as a result, well, let's just say he shouldn't have thrown away that extra pair of undies. I hate you, dad. Aw, he called him dad. After, Donnie heads back to get his things and depart from Todd's life once more. That is, until he overhears Todd's fiance speaking to another man, Steve, on the phone. I don't care if he finds out. Uh-oh. The next day, Donnie crashes a party the day before the wedding. Todd, you can't marry her. She's cheating with Steve. Steve is Todd's boss. Oh my god. Or maybe she's not. Turns out she was on the phone with another Steve who's actually a wedding reporter who wants to do a piece on them. It was supposed to be a surprise. At night, Todd prepares to take his wife home, but then Chad pulls up. Meanwhile, a depressed Donnie reasons that to win Todd over, he'll have to first win over Jamie. And what better way than with some ice cream? True. He heads into the hotel she's staying at, and upon nearing her room, hears some very saucy sounds. Fearing for the sanctity of his son's marriage, Donnie sneaks around the outside of the building to do some snooping. Oh my god, Steve, come out now. Is this for real right now? Chad explains that this is simply their secret tickle time. Secret tickle time? Donnie has seen enough. He heads out to break the news to Todd, but Jamie stops him. How much do I have to pay you? Seeing as Todd never signed the release form for the prison TV thing, Donnie is still broke and on the brink of going to jail. So, he takes the money and stays quiet. The next day, he chats with his lawyer about what happened. We've all been there. Oh, oh, okay. He congratulates him, but Donnie just can't let it end like this. He rushes to Vanilla Ice's place, hops in the car with him, throws on some tunes, and rushes to the wedding. Meanwhile, the ceremony is underway. They're running out of time. Oh great, now they're stuck. The pair run the rest of the way and make it just in the nick of time. We ran well over a mile. Me, when I run well over a mile. <laughs> Before Donnie can spill the beans, Jamie's dad runs after him, but grandma comes in clutch. Let the boy talk. Donnie gives Jamie a choice. Tell Todd or I tell everyone. After a moment, she leans into his ear. Okay, well that's not that bad. Man, you are lying. This is your last chance. Jamie trepidatiously leans in once more. You do secret tickle time with your brother? Oh, my. And with that, the marriage is off. And he reveals his true identity. My name isn't Todd Peterson. It's Han Solo, and I am a burger. God bless. Suddenly, Jamie charges towards Donnie with a knife in hand. <laughs> nice save. 
He hands the drink to Hans, but then Chad comes in full speed ahead. Like father, like son. In the aftermath, all the boys celebrate and we see that Todd has already moved on to Bree. And as far as Donnie's debts, well, check out the TV. Looks like the big boy actually did it. Against all odds, Donnie's $20 bet is now worth $160,000. Hurrah! Moral of the story? I have no idea. Happy holidays. Okay, I'm going to sleep now. Good night.